I am Johan Blackson and welcome back to my channel Juice Learning. Today we are going to discuss about water, a universal solvent. Why are we calling water a universal solvent? Two experiments we are going to learn in detail. So let's get started. We all know that water is called as a universal solvent. Do you know why we are calling water as a universal solvent? Because it is able to dissolve much more substances than any other liquid. Water has a polar arrangement of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. On one side, hydrogen has a positive electrical charge while on the other side, oxygen has a negative charge. This polar arrangement helps water to attract and dissolve all polar substances. Let us understand this through an experiment. Before we move on to our experiment, let us first understand what is solute, solvent and solution. Solute is the substance which is dissolved. Solvent is the substance in which a solute is dissolved. Solution is a homogeneous mixture containing a solute dissolved in a solvent. In this experiment, water is a solvent. Now let's move on to the experiment. For this experiment, we will need Three glasses of water, salt, sugar and mustard seed. First let us add them one by one. And let's see what happens. Next after adding stir them nicely. Now I am going to add some sugar into this glass. Stir it well. Now lastly, we are going to add some salt into this glass. Now stir it well as we have done to the sugar and to the mustard. Now I have mixed salt, sugar and mustard seed in these glasses. Now let's see what has happened to them. In the salt and sugar glasses, we can see that the salt and sugar are completely dissolved. But in the glass of the mustard seed, we can see that it is not even dissolved. It has just settled down at the bottom of the glass. Do you know why these things have happened? Because salt and sugar are polar substances. Water is also a polar substance. So it is easy for the water to attract and dissolve salt and sugar substances. But mustard seed is a non-polar substance. So water cannot attract non-polar substances. It can only attract and dissolve polar substances. But this is a non-polar substance so it can't dissolve. So we can conclude from this experiment that water can only attract and dissolve polar substances like baking soda, potassium permanganate, salt, sugar etc. But water cannot dissolve non-polar substances like mud, sand, paper, mustard seed, etc. Do you know what will happen if you add a bulk amount of polar substances into a little amount of water? Let me explain. It will not dissolve completely because if there are so much polar molecules and there are only little polar molecules of water then after the spaces between the water molecules are filled and there are no more space left, then that remaining polar substance will not dissolve and will remain like that, settled down at the bottom of the glass. Now, I am going to show you one more experiment of how the soluble substances are dissolving in hot water and cold water. First, let us add some salt to the hot water. Now let's add to the cold water. You can see. Now we can see that in hot water and cold water there's a difference. In hot water, the soil does dissolve much more faster compared to the cold water. Do you know why these things happen? Because 
in when the water is hot the molecules move much more faster compared to the cold water so they dissolve much more faster in the hot water than in the cold water so we can conclude that in hot water the soluble substance will dissolve much more faster compared to the cold water before we were talking about solids that are dissolving completely in water and solids that are not dissolving completely in water but now let's discuss about liquids that dissolve in water and liquids that do not dissolve in water liquids that dissolve in water are called as miscible liquids miscibility is the property where two liquids can combine to form a homogeneous mixture on the other hand immiscible liquids are the complete opposite of miscible liquids immiscible liquids are liquids that do not mix with water immiscibility is the property where two liquids cannot combine a homogeneous mixture for this experiment i took three glasses of water vinegar oil and milk first let's start with adding the vinegar Now let's add the oil. Now lastly let's add the milk. Now let's see what happens. First in the vinegar glass we are we can see that it has completely dissolved and we cannot separate it at all. But in the case of oil, we can see a small ring of oil floating above the surface of the water. Do you know why? Because oil has lower density than the water. So it floats on the water rather than dissolve. Now in the milk glass, we can see that the milk has completely dissolved in the glass. Now we can see that the milk and the vinegar are both completely dissolved so we can say that they both are miscible liquids but in the oil glass we can see that instead of dissolving it has just formed a ring above the surface of the water but now we can see here that the oil has not dissolved at all so we can say that oil is a immiscible liquid you know why these things have happened because in milk and vinegar these both liquids are equal density to water but in the oil glass we can see that oil is not dissolved because oil is has lesser density than water so it, it floats so we can conclude that liquids that have lower density than water will just float on the water surface like this oil but liquids that are having more density than water just sink and settle down at the bottom of the glass but liquids that are equal density to water just completely dissolve in water for example milk and vinegar etc so we can say that immiscibility and miscibility depends on the density of the liquid since i brought up the topic of sinking and floating Let's do an experiment about it. For this experiment, I took two glasses of water, two nails, and two leaves. Let's first try with dropping one by one the nails into this glass of water. We can see that it sinks. And let's try the same with the leaves. Before I start, let me tell you the meaning of the word density. Density of a substance is its mass per unit volume. And so the objects that have tightly packed molecules have much more density and thus sink in the water like this name but substances which have lightly packed molecules have lesser density than this so it floats on the water so we can say that objects with much more density sinks and objects which have less density than water floats on the surface of the water now let's try this experiment again with some more substances first let's try with this air filled ball this 
will float. Now let's try with the other ball. Now we can see that the white ball and the yellow ball are floating. You know why this has happened? Because these balls are filled with air. One of the factors that sinking and floating depend on if they are filled with air bubbles or not. You might have seen a ship, right? You may think it's heavy and it's supposed to sink. But it doesn't. Because even though it's big, it occupies much more space, which is another factor that floating and sinking depends upon. But most of the space of a ship is occupied with air bubbles as these balls. Floating and sinking also depends upon the space a particular substance takes. For, for this experiment that I'm going to do it right now, I, I took a ball of clay and a mug of water. Now let's drop the clay and see what's happening. If it floats or sinks. It sinks. With the same clay, I'm shaping it like a raft. Now I'm going to drop it in the water. Now we can see that it floats. You know why? Because it occupies much more space than the ball which I put in earlier. So now we can conclude that when an object takes up much more space, it will float. So we can conclude from these experiments that floating and sinking depends on how much the density it is, how much space it occupies, if it's filled with air bubbles. Now the first example when I took a nail and a leaf. This nail is sinking into the water because it has tightly packed molecules and thus it has much more density than the water. So it sinks. But in the other case, leaf. Leaf has lower density than water. So it will float on the water. In this experiment, we did that, we could understand that if a particular substance takes up more space, it will float. In this experiment, these both are filled with air bubbles. So if any substance are filled with air bubbles, they will float. So from all of the experiments I have shown this far, we can conclude that water is a universal solvent as it dissolves many substances depending on their density and polar nature. But some substances will sink and other substances will float. This all depends upon the density, how much volume it takes up, and if it has any air bubbles inside. You can also try these experiments at home with some other substances and see what happens. Now I'm going to do a fun film experiment with my brother Juan. For this experiment, we took uh, two glasses of water and two eggs. Now I'm going to put this egg into the water. Let's see what happens. Now you can see that the egg has sinked into the water. Now I'm going to add the salt into this glass of water. Now I'm going to put this egg into the salty water. Let's see what happens. Now we can see that the egg is floating. Do you know why this has happened? Because in his water, we can see that the egg has sunk into the water because what this egg is much having more density than the water. But in this case, I added salt to it. The salt increases the density of the water. So when I put the salt in it, it increases much more than the egg. So the egg will be lighter than the water. So it will float on the water surface. So we can conclude from this that salty water has much more density than normal. I hope you understood the concept and also enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel and also click the bell icon to get notifications on my latest videos. Bye friends! Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.